Tibur. Thank you. I shall now deliver a statement in my capacity as the representative of the Russian Federation. The Russian Federation voted against the anti-Russian and anti-Ukrainian draft resolution of the Security Council that was submitted today. Why is it anti-Russian? I think that there is no need to explain. Why it suffices to have a, a, a merely cast a cursory glance at the text. Why is it anti-Ukrainian? This is because the document, beyond any doubt, runs counter to the fundamental interest of the Ukrainian people insofar as it is an attempt to salvage and cement in Ukraine that system of power which which brought the country to the point of tragedy, which has now been ongoing for at the very least eight years now. We thank those who did not support this draft. I will not respond to those who just accuse the Russian Federation of abusing uh, the veto right. Well, the main reason for our negative vote is not the fact that there is what is included in the draft, but what is left out. If its sponsors were attempt to, to were to attempt to make it even remotely balanced, then they would not have left out issues which must be addressed and cannot be overlooked in the context of the Ukrainian problem. Specifically, they would not. Uh, what was left out is the fact that those who assumed and seized power as a result of the anti-constitutional coup in Kiev in February 2014, I refer to the Maidan junta, the way that they unleashed a war against the residents of the country's east, shelling residential areas with artillery pieces and multiple rocket launchers, raining bombs on the people of Donetsk and Lugansk. What was left out was the way that the Ukrainian authorities, with the encouragement of their Western patrons, consistently and cynically shirked their responsibility to implement the Minsk agreements, the linchpin of which was direct dialogue with the residents of the country's east. At the same time, what was positioned on the line of contact, the deployment of Ukrainian death squads, quad squads comprised largely of radical neo-Nazi battalions, methodically, day after day, shelled the residential areas of DPR and LPR, killing women, children, and the elderly. And incidentally, this is ongoing today, just today, four civilians died as a result of the actions of the Ukrainian armed forces. And how can we fail to mention the blood-chilling crimes by the Ukrainian nationalists as perpetrated over the past eight years, the fact that the protesters against Maidan and Odessa were burned alive, the fact that peaceful protesters in Maidan were shot at by unknown snipers. The investigation into both of these tragedies is something that has been deliberately swept under the rug by the Maidan regime. At the same time, the culprits in the Odessa tragedy are well known. They are openly flaunting their presence. And yet an alternative investigation and the recognition by the snipers themselves unambiguously confirms that the slaughter on the pla uh, at, at Independence Square was a provocation by the leaders of Maidan. We specifically last year carried out an informal Security Council meeting, an ARIA formula meeting on both of these issues with the aim of sharing with Security Council colleagues more information about this. And yet in response, at best, what we heard from Western partners were merely hackneyed cliches about so-called Russian propaganda. How can there be a resolution on the Ukrainian issue without these above-mentioned issues being mentioned? It would have been wise to include in the draft of all an honest assessment of the role of Western colleagues in inflating this Ukrainian crisis. Not only did they stand behind the Maidan coup, but they also effectively issued a carte blanche to Kiev to carry out any acts, any steps that would be unthinkable for any civilized state. And this includes the egregious discrimination against the Russian language and consequently Russian language speakers. This includes glorification of Hitler's henchmen aligned in, in uh, alongside the prohibition on, prohibi on processions to honor the real heroes of Ukraine who freed it of Nazism as well as the religious schism in that country. As you spin tales about the triumph of democracy in Ukraine, the Maidan authorities and nationalists have been, with impunity, murdering their political opponents. They have been persecuting the opposition. They have been shuttering opposition television channels where it was possible to at least have 
some small dose of relatively objective information. Six of them, six of those television channels were shuttered under President Zelensky alone. And how can we fail to mention the fact that weapon has been flooded with weapons, weapons that were used then to kill civilians in Donbass. Donbass, you have made Ukraine a pawn in your geopolitical game with no concern whatsoever about the interest of the Ukrainian people. Responsibility for what is transpiring at present lies not only with the Ukrainian government, but it also lies at your feet, ladies and gentlemen. And today's draft resolution, your draft resolution, is nothing other uh, than yet another brutal, inhumane move in this Ukrainian chessboard. Colleagues, today, all Western media outlets have been inundated with reports about how civilian populations in Kiev and a host of other Ukrainian cities have been seeking shelter in bomb shelters and they are fighting for their lives and uh, fleeing artillery fire. We are genuinely empathized with our neighbors and we urge them not to yield to provocation. President Putin and the Russian Defense Ministry explicitly stated and clearly stated that there would be no strikes targeting civilian uh, infrastructure, but nationalists are already using civilians as human shields. Specifically, we categorically and, and, and condemn the placement by nationalists in residential areas of artillery and multiple rocket launchers. This is a direct breach of the norms of international humanitarian law, including Articles 51 and 58 to the first additional protocol of the Geneva Conventions. We see the way the situation is being exploited in propagandistic exercises by Western politicians and media outlets. I would like to ask you, where were you eight years ago? Why were you unmoved when there was murder and artillery strikes in Donbass? Why didn't you even bother to notice that there are four, more than four million people living in DPR and in LPR who at best were branded pro-Russian separatists? Why didn't you repudiate Poroshenko when he said that the people, that the residents of Donbass would rot in basements? Or Zelensky, why didn't you repudiate uh, him when they called them non-people and uh, specimens? Parenthetically, I cannot but note that at the height of propaganda, our colleagues very frequently use imagery from Donbass, brandishing them as alleged uh, consequences of the so-called Russian aggression in Ukraine. These kinds of fakes are abundant and proliferating today. They have flooded the internet and a number of uh, telegram channels. And there are uh, videos uh, uh, of Russian, alleging Russian strikes targeting residential areas, which were filmed in other parts of uh, the world and in, uh, have nothing to do with Ukraine. This was mentioned today by the British Broadcasting Company, the BBC, having issued an article, Ukraine conflict, many misleading images have been shared online. Everything is there. There are photographs of parades, of photographs of American aircraft which bombed Libya, and photographs from Syria, and even, even an explosion in Beirut, Beirut which is being uh, portrayed as uh, what is transpiring in Ukraine. I will send this uh, article to you, distinguished members of the Security Council, separately. And specifically, I wish to turn to my French, the French, British, and American colleagues. Uh, the permanent uh, representative of France said that in Ukraine, what is uh, taking place is um, the murder of civilians. That is untrue. Russian troops are not bombing Ukrainian cities. And we said uh, that they are not threatened by anything. There is no verifiable confirmation whatsoever about the deaths of civilians. The permanent representative of the United Kingdom, I would note that what you are portraying as what, uh, alleging that a Russian military aircraft, uh, military pieces are uh, targeting civilians. I saw the reports today and I would like to report that this you can see from the videos that this is a heavy tank uh, 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 piece, which is called Stre uh, uh, Strela 10, Arrow 10. And this is in the 
possession of the Ukrainian armed forces. The Russian military does not have this kind of equipment. They are obsolete. This is the kind of fake uh, pieces of information that you are using, our U.S. colleagues, I would note, that uh, this, with respect to, to the alleged bombing of the kindergarten, that too is fake. Of course, it is difficult for us to uh, compete with the United States in terms of the number of invasions uh, t uh, targeting their neighbors. I will refrain from uh, listing out the aggressions carried out by the United States in their history, but you are in no position to moralize. To conclude, I wish to emphasize we are not waging a war against the Ukraine against Ukraine or the Ukrainian people. We are carrying a special operation against a nationalist and for the protection of the residents of Donbass for denazification and for demilitarization. These objectives will soon be achieved and the Ukrainian people will be will gain an opportunity to once again independently determine their future. Living and in so doing to live in peace, good neighborliness, and cooperation with all of their neighbors. I now resume my duties as a president of the Security Council, and I give the floor to the representative of the United States for an additional remark, for additional remarks. Colleagues, I um, asked to take the floor uh, for a different reason, and I, so I'm not going to respond to uh, the atrocious lies and uh, propaganda and misinformation that you just heard from our Russian colleague. What I asked to take the floor for was to uh, recall uh, the names of some of our colleagues who were not named earlier due to the rapidly um, uh, moving uh, response to, to these events in Ukraine. Some of them were, uh, were left off who were sponsors of, of the resolution, and I'd just like to highlight uh, their names because we so appreciate what they have done. Uh, Barbados, Croatia, Estonia, De Gambia, Grenada, Haiti, Jamaica, 